in this week's Bondi Vet compilation, nightmares come true as we race the clock. It just shuts down their ability to breathe and they can't survive that. And fight to save poisoned pets. It's 1,200 times more powerful than cyanide. Will the antidote be enough? The toxin is just raging through her system. <laughs> to reunite these devastated families. It wouldn't be home without Boston. It makes our family whole. It's 9pm and Chris is responding to an emergency call. Just come straight through, girl. Little Luku has suddenly lost the use of her back legs. <laughs> Debbie and her son Jonas noticed Luku starting to stumble a couple of hours ago. All right, she's definitely got some weakness there. You can see she's propping out, just trying yeah. to support herself. Yeah, have you got what you pulled off her? There are three different types of ticks that attack animals. The most dangerous is the paralysis tick that injects toxin straight into the bloodstream. The hallmark of a paralysis tick is the fact they have two lighter coloured legs that are shorter, which are the middle pair, and you can see these ones are lighter coloured and they're shorter. So it is a paralysis tick. You can see the size of that crater. That, that tick's actually been there for quite a while. Yeah. See how she's just doing a little bit of a gagging? It almost looks like she's trying to vomit. That's just a sign that she's she's just starting to feel the effects of that toxin, of that tick toxin around her throat. Tick paralysis works forward from the hind legs to the head. It's now reached Luku's chest, putting her in the danger zone. Dogs obviously don't pass away from ticks from, from having weak back legs. It's when their breathing becomes paralysed and they lose the ability to, to clear their throat and they can actually be at risk of, of vomiting and then, then inhaling it. The antitoxin is being administered but it's still a race against time. If I had to say what my biggest worry with Luku was right now, it'd be aspiration pneumonia. It's the number one killer of dogs with tick paralysis for a reason. It just shuts down their ability to breathe and they can't survive that. I'm just looking for any dramatic changes in her breathing or her heart rate. For Luku, it must be an incredibly weird, but also scary feeling to all of a sudden lose control of your body, to not be able to move your back legs and then not be able to breathe, to start to asphyxiate. And that's what she's going through right now. The antitoxin is now fighting the poison in Luku's system, but it will take several hours before Chris can be sure that it's been successful. Yeah, she's not air conditioned. No. That's probably a response to the toxin. Yeah. If she makes an attempt to vomit and actually doesn't bring it up properly and then takes a big deep breath inwards, then that vomit goes straight into her lungs. And from there, she can't breathe through that. And it could be the end of her. Now, Luku, can you feel another tick on you? If so, you gotta tell us where it is. Otherwise, we're gonna spray you. We're gonna spray you, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Luku is being given a spray treatment to make sure there's no more paralysis ticks lurking in her fur. Yeah, look a bit rough there. Luke, yeah. Maybe tell her the guy in the blue shirt isn't all bad and she doesn't need to be shaking like that. I think she knows that already. They, <laughs> they suss people out pretty quickly, aren't they? She knows you're on her team. She's on Team Luku. I hope so. Even though I've given Luku that antitoxin, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be OK. Oh, she's shaking. They can still get worse for 24 hours after you remove the tick. The antitoxin helps, but it's not a cure straight away. All right. Okay. I'll leave it with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Even though Debbie has left and has said goodnight, I just know she'll go home and she won't sleep. She'll be sitting by the phone waiting, hoping that it doesn't ring, because she knows that if the phone rings, it's not going to be good news. Is that miss? It's now 1.30 in the morning. Chris and Erin will take turns keeping an eye on Luku. I know it's not the most comfortable sleeping position. Yeah, I know. But it helps you breathe. Mm -hmm. The worry I have is if she has a vomit and we're not watching. If she does, if that goes into her lungs, she pretty much has no chance. I'm not going to be able to sleep if she's like this, so... I'll take first watch. How about that? Alright. Two hours on, two hours off. See you in two hours. 
I'll be here mm-hmm. looking at her. I'm and sure she'll be here to. looking at me. <laughs> All right, lights? Yeah. See ya. Sleep well. I'll try. <laughs> How is she? Yeah, go have a look for yourself. You'll see. Next morning, after catching up on some much-needed sleep, Chris is back at the clinic to check up on his tick patient, Luku. Hi, Luku. Um, you're walking. The lucky survivor's legs are still wobbly, but definitely working. Luku's gone loco. <laughs> yeah. There are, however, some telltale signs of the toxin still attacking her system. Luku can't go home for another 24 hours, even though she looks so good. It's because her gag reflex, that ability to stop herself from inhaling a food, still isn't strong enough. Still not much of a gag there, is there? If she was to have a meal right now, there'd be a decent chance that it'd end up in her lungs and that that could kill her. You know what, though? You need to rest. You mightn't think it, but you actually do need to rest. You can't take on the world right now. Luku, can you eat safely, huh? You ready? Well, it's gone. So there was meant to be some suspense there, but you, you just you swallowed it. At Bondi, tick patient Luku is now eating without any problems. Lick clean. And has convinced Chris she's ready to go home. There you go. Hello, Luku. Hello, darling. Oh, you all better? Oh, sweetness. All four legs in full working order. That's the way we like you. You're going to get in one more lick? No licks? You just want to go, don't you? I thought so. See you, Debbie. <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's See all right. Later. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm sure she'll remember. Oh, that's what they all say. <sighs> Rejection, it's, it's a hard one to take. Andrew and his daughter, Emily, have just rushed to the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash. I might pop her on the floor, actually, because then I can see if she can stand. Their much-loved four-year-old Labrador, Chino, is suddenly experiencing uncontrollable seizures. Hey, you are, Chino. Chino's been swimming at the beach about two hours ago, and then she suddenly started tremoring in her face and all over her body. It's most likely something she's eaten. She's playful, very energetic and, and awesome with the family, but um, yeah, not well today. She's a beautiful dog, yeah. You like Gina? She's been exposed to some sort of toxin. I don't know what it is, and I really need to try and work out what's going on here. Head down. Come on. That's OK. As Chino's family waits for news, the poison attacks her system again. <laughs> the toxin is just raging through her system. We really need to stabilise her before she actually gets any worse. I'm going to make you feel a little bit sick now. I've just given Chino an injection of a drug called apomorphine, which is a drug that makes them vomit quite quickly. And I'm hoping that she's going to bring up something that's in her stomach that can give us some clue as to what's going on. So we just have to now wait for her to vomit. Okay, so there are some seeds. Lisa needs to quickly identify these seeds before Chino's condition becomes critical. I am concerned that she's eaten a plant called Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. This plant, which is also known as Brunfelsia, is highly toxic to dogs. I am concerned that those might be the seeds. Hi, Andrew, it's Lisa calling. What I want to know is, is there a plant in the area where she has been this morning? It's got purple and white little flowers all over it. Ah, oh, OK. Andrew has confirmed that Brunfelsia is growing in his garden. Chino now needs treatment urgently. It is an extremely toxic plant. It affects the brain, and she's absolutely not out of the danger zone yet. Reverse. I 
don't know how good she'll be. With the poisonous plant identified, Lisa's giving Chino an enema to eliminate the toxin from her system. What's a girl? As long as the seeds are inside her digestive tract, they're still toxic. So it doesn't matter if they're in the stomach or in the, they're in the colon. We need to get them out. All right, darling. I know, I know. That's a girl, that's a girl. Okay. You right, Steph? Good girl. Oh, there are a lot of seeds here. Oh, what a good girl. I have never seen that many seeds come out of an enema. I mean, they were just shooting across the room and all over me. Colonic irrigation. I have some colonics. People pay a lot of money for this, but um, Chino's getting it as part of her package. <sighs> oh, look, there's some bigger seeds oh, there. Oh, wonderful. Good girl, you'll feel better, darling. I know you can't understand that. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> we have a spectator here. All right. I don't know how much she's going to like this. Now the Labrador is being force-fed one last treatment. Oh, it's yucky. The charcoal binds to any toxin that is still in her gut, so it's going to prevent anything that's floating around there from being absorbed. Now it's just a matter of time and we just have to let her body eliminate the toxin. I know, it's not nice, darling. Hey, Chino, it's home time. Who's there? 24 hours after surviving a terrible scare, the poison is finally out of Chino's system. Believe it or not, she's usually a bit more energetic even than that. She had thousands of these seeds. Before Chino goes home, Lisa wants to be certain Andrew knows the danger plant to look out for. Thanks, Lisa. No worries. Thanks very much. You want to say thank bye you? Bye-bye. To Lisa? It's a very happy ending for Chino and Andrew's over the moon, but it's, there's a lesson there. People need to know that if they've got a dog and they've got Brunfelsia growing, they need to rip it out. The doc is answering a call for help from his old mate, Dr. Doug English, who runs the busy Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital. Ha <laughs> ha, how are you, oh, Chris, how are you going? Hey, good, good to, to see, see you. Again. We can go ahead with all the work that we've got lined up for Beautiful. you. Beautiful, thanks mate, I'll just get in here now. Yeah, poor little girl. But before Chris gets a chance to settle in, his first patient of the day is waiting in reception. Yes, Amanda and her son, Jesse, are extremely concerned right. about their beloved Jack Russell, Snoopy. I'm here because she's just recently started doing a lot of frothing in her mouth and really irritated, and then she started throwing up. So tell me, what's, what's been going on with Snoopy? Um, last night, um, she just started, she's done it a couple of times, but lots of frothing and red lips and started to throw up and just was really ill afterwards. Is it the first time it's happened? Not, no, not the first time. We've actually got some footage of her when she, what, what, what was going on last night. Yeah. You want to see that? I'd love to. You got it, Jess? Yeah, I've got it. You can see that saliva really building up. Mm. Okay. It's quite full on at times, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's not nice. Clearly something is affecting her body in a big way. Okay, let's have a look over here, Smith. So her mouth looks okay now. That's that's the interesting thing. The, the colour's fine and then, you know, she's producing just the right amount of saliva. She doesn't look dehydrated. So And her eyes, she kind of gets a really glazed look in her eyes. Mm -hmm. They look fine now too. The confusing thing for me right now is that Snoopy seems quite normal. Yeah, sure enough, that's fine as well. So Snoopy right now is a perfectly normal dog. When she has these episodes, she sounds like she's in pain. She's in, in a confused state. She's hyper salivating. She's pouring in her mouth. Yeah. And the other interesting thing is there's two of them mm. and the other one doesn't, there's not, that's not going on. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's amazing. It's hard to know exactly what this could be, but when you look at those signs, you've got to think she may be having either a mild seizure 
She could be being poisoned by something. She could be eating something she shouldn't be. Right now though, it is a complete mystery. There's something very unique to her that's happening. Yeah. I guess for me, the, the thing that I really need to do is actually see what happens in her backyard because yeah. something's happening. Yeah. And it's happening more and more often and it's getting more and more serious. Yeah. Chris is planning to check up on Snoopy later. He's hoping a home visit will provide vital answers to the little Jack Russell's bizarre attacks. So I do think we need to sort this out and actually sort it out now. Yeah. Hi, Chris. Oh. I'm out this way. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you for coming. So who's... This is this Scrappy, is the little one. Scrappy and Snoopy. And Snoopy. Wow, they're similar. Yeah, sisters. There's a very good reason why I've essentially come to Amanda's backyard here, because this problem is happening with increasing severity, increasing frequency, and the worry is that if it happens again and somehow Snoopy gets a bigger dose of whatever it is, it could kill her. Something within this area here yeah. could be causing what we're seeing with Snoopy. Yeah. But working it out isn't going to be easy. I mean, I'd like to start by looking at the plants. Yes. So this is tiger grass here. Yeah. And then a mondo grass underneath. Now, neither of these are toxic. So even if they were chewing on them, it shouldn't be causing any sort of irritation, any sort of signs that we're seeing. Are you using any pesticides or any chemicals in the yard? Only um, seaweed spray, that's okay. all I use. Or chicken poo. That should be fine. Yep. Okay, wow. All right, so we've got some toadstools here. They'll cause vomiting, they'll cause some diarrhoea, they'll cause a little bit of erratic behaviour, but they generally don't cause the salivation. Maybe it's not such a big deal. Plus, you know, they haven't been disturbed. I'm pretty sure if they liked them, they wouldn't still be here. Yep. Okay. I was hoping that a walk around this yard would somehow show me a, a toxic plant that had been chewed on or maybe a chemical that had been left out. I'll be honest, this is a tough situation because I'm not really getting any closer to finding an answer for Amanda and for the family. What I do know, though, is that this problem is happening in this backyard. Really, the only way to know for sure is to watch these dogs around the clock until Snoopy has one of those attacks. Okay. You staying up all night tonight? <laughs> I'm not, but a camera is. Okay, all right. So all the possibilities are really covered by this shot here. Uh -huh. We've got the pond. We've also got some of the toadstools over here. We've also got these fence lines here. Given our location, I do have a sneaking suspicion about what might be to blame. The video is going to tell us the truth. OK, so fingers crossed. All right. Obviously don't want any disasters from these guys, <laughs> but I want some information. OK. Excellent. Thank you. All right. It's yep. in your hands. Great. Chris is returning to visit Snoopy. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Chris. But on his arrival, he is shocked to find the little Jack Russell right in the middle of one of her distressing attacks. I can see, yeah, she's drooling now. Yeah. There you go. OK, there you go. Hey. She was, it was really, really frothy before yeah. and fluffy and she's been eating grass and... Yeah. Wow, you can see it's really bubbling out there now. Yeah. Well, Snoopy came in and she, she had froth coming out of her mouth and she was clawing, trying to get it out. The interesting thing is that th this is the body's natural response to something that's, that's really irritating that mouth. Yeah. Because you can see that it's trying to flush it out by producing all that saliva. OK. I think... Can you, can you get me a bucket of water? Sure. Is that all right? If Snoopy has taken on board something that is toxic, then naturally we have to try to remove it. The way I'm going to do it is by using a bucket of water and some swabs and hopefully clean her mouth right out. Her heart rate's quite high, so... There's clearly something going on in her body right now that is causing her just to go a little bit haywire. What I want to do is just give her mouth a flush. You can see it just a gums a little bit red, her tongue's quite red. And yeah. just seeing that bubbling saliva there, now that we've cleaned out her mouth, I want to see what happens. Okay. So immediately, she looks more relaxed, doesn't she? Yeah. Yep. And there's no drool. There's no drool. Yeah. So this is, I guess, probably good news because what we're seeing is the fact that if you can remove whatever it is that's irritating her mouth, yeah. Straight away, she is okay, almost straight away. 
Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So it's a remarkable turnaround, and I'd imagine that was probably not a severe attack from... Yeah, no, not nearly as bad as I've seen it. Yeah. 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 See, the fact we can resolve it so quickly by just cleaning a mouth out... Yeah. ...it's a pretty, pretty important clue. Yeah. Did that video work last night, as far as you know? As far as I know. Yeah. Can we have a look at that? Sure. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. You okay? Yeah? I've got to say, I do have a nagging suspicion about what might be causing this, but it doesn't explain why one dog is affected and not the other. But the video should tell us either way. OK, there's not much happening. See these things here that look like they could be dog poos? I don't think they are, because one just moved. Cane toads. The cane toads. So you've got cane toads hopping around your backyard at night, and now you've got Jack Russells. So we still don't really have our answer until the dogs come in. Oh no! <laughs> this is the greatest squeaky toy of all time. <laughs> oh no! Look at them. So you've got ah, uh, you've got Scrappy there and Snoopy, but look who's the one that goes in hard. Snoopy. Snoopy. Scrappy is a bit of a bystander. Snoopy, though, is getting right in there. Cane toads have a poison in glands behind their shoulders. They can actually squirt that out or just excrete it onto their skin. And you see, watch Snoopy here, puts it in a mouth. They, they say that the effect of, of the poison is quite similar to marijuana, so sh she may actually be getting quite seriously high off these toads and each night she goes out there and has her hit of it. Mm. The problem is though that to have that poison every night, it's going to start to, to really play havoc with the system. Today Snoopy was quite lucky. It looked like she only had a very small dose of that poison. But now we have to find a way to wean her off her little addiction. And for that, I'll have to pull out a few tricks. What are you doing in there? Oh. <laughs> You're looking, I'm looking for cane toads. I am. I'm looking for them. <laughs> I've got you rattled. I, I've looked every... Absolutely. And come I can't on, come find on out. one. I've got some help for you here, okay. okay? This yard doesn't naturally have cane toads. They're coming in from the outside world. Yep. So we've got to look along this fence here, because it looks pretty secure. We've got to look along the fence, see if there are any areas where they can get in under. And you can see here... Let's see. Yeah, we come to here. And see here? We've got gaps here. Oh. See, if I can get my fingers in there, the yeah. toes can get in there as well. Okay. So, oh. plenty of toes. Look. So, <laughs> <laughs> true to form. Mm. It doesn't take long for Chris's right theory right to be proven true. And you see where he was? Yeah. Right underneath the fence there. So, I reckon this is probably one of the highways they're using to get in and out. Okay. I'm not sure if this cane toad was in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the right time because he's going to come in very handy in a second. So we need to block this up. OK. This stuff's perfect because we'll still let little insects and, and bugs through, yeah. which should be here, but won't let cane toads. Right, so if we feed this through here, stretch along on the ground and pop it through this part of the fence here. OK. And then push our dirt up against it and some leaf litter. Okay. Yep. And then that little hole is patched. You're probably going to have about two, three, four of these along the fence line. Yeah. Do each of those. Yep. And you'll stop the toads from getting in. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. Now, probably the biggest challenge of all. Chris may have <laughs> solved one problem, but now comes the biggest test. He needs to cure Snoopy's life-threatening cane toad obsession. The problem we've got We've got two Jack Russells who are driven by instinct. And with Snoopy's case, she can't help herself but chase them, lick them, bite them, and each time she does that, she gets the dose of that poison. We need to make the thrill of the chase for her a lot less thrillful. Okay. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use an air horn. Now, conveniently, we already have a toad. <laughs> so if we put the toad on the ground, wait for Snoopy to appear, Snoopy comes up and has a look at the toad. <laughs> looks away and now 
She's wary because she's heard that sound. If she goes after it again, can she resist? No. Okay. So, so we make that sound, get her attention. Then we pick her up. We take her straight to the laundry and put her in there. So you saw what happened there? Yep. She went to chase the cane toad. Yeah. You sound that horn. She stops. Yeah. Wonders why that horn sounded when she chased the cane toad. Keep on doing that. She makes the connection between that sound she doesn't like and chasing the toad. But as an added disincentive for her, she gets put in the laundry every single time she chases the toads. OK. Sounds okay. good. Between the horn and the laundry, I think Snoopy's cane toad licking days are over. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank you so much. It's I really pleasure. appreciate it. Sort of Thank luck. you. Okay, bye. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Lisa is confronted with a rare emergency. One-year-old Bella has bitten a deadly puffer fish on the beach. Hey, darling, can I pick you up? Right, OK, OK. Right. OK, so Bella apparently picked up a puffer fish this morning. She's been vomiting all day. She's clearly in a lot of distress. Uh, she's very weak, she can't stand, she's got tremors. Puffer fish are extremely dangerous. I mean, usually an animal should be dead within 60 minutes of biting one. Within half an hour, they have struggling to breathe and they need to be put on a ventilator. So this happened this morning. It's now been several hours and she's only starting to show these sorts of signs later. So it is quite atypical, but I am worried. This is really weird. I've never actually seen anything like this. I, I just want to make sure that she can breathe and ventilate properly because the worry is that the diaphragm can get paralysed and that's when they die. In reception, a quick search of the internet is not helping Bella's owner, Greg. Just did a check and it's um, the to toxin in, in puffer fish is actually, I think it's 1,200 times more powerful than cyanide. So obviously a little bit goes a long way for a, for a poor little dog that small. You're okay, you're okay. I oh, know. This is really bizarre. Bella picked up a puffer fish eight hours ago. She should be dead right now. There's no treatment for puffer fish toxicity. Uh, there's no antidote at all. So Bella needs to be treated with a drip and pain relief and sedation. And then we need to watch her really closely to make sure she doesn't need to go on a ventilator. Just have a sleep again. Sorry to disturb you, sweetie. It's a rare case and Lisa is searching for answers. What we do know about the toxin in puffer fish is that it's one of the most deadly toxins in the world. It's the same sort of toxin that's in blue ringed octopuses. It's called uh, tetrodotoxin. So what it basically does is it shuts the nerves down all over the body. I must admit I haven't actually ever seen anything quite like this. Bella's owner Greg is struggling to cope with the news. Worst case scenario with puffer fish toxicity is that it can affect their heart, so it can make the heart basically stop. Usually if they're going to improve, whether they're on a ventilator or not, they will take say 24 to 36 hours mm -hmm. to get better. She's still with us, so she's going well. Greg's now calling his wife, Carolyn. Little Bella may be running out of time. Oh, sweet. Oh. Yeah. 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 Here you go. Oh, <laughs> Greg's wife Carolyn has arrived at Sash to comfort the critically ill Bella. Bella just turned one yesterday, so she's still a baby. She's such a, a cheeky little creature. She's young. <laughs> she's like, oh, she's just cheeky. And she's a, a really cheeky little grin. It's amazing how little, you know, hairy creatures can just touch her heart. We don't know what's going to happen over the next few hours, so we'll just take it hour by hour, I think. 
is a sleepy one. Can we see if you can stand these? Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, she's still not good. She still hasn't got control of her legs and her, and her head sort of swaying around and she's groaning. She still doesn't want to be touched. So the toxin is still in her system. But when Lisa puts the shaky Bella on the floor, she's showing plenty of courage. Come here. This is pretty amazing. I mean, Bella's still fragile, but she's standing and she's even walking. Yes, she's wobbly, but she's walking. She's getting there. She's sort of just learning to use her legs again. She's still a bit wobbly. Oh my goodness, now I can pick you up and you don't quiver. Several okay. days after biting a poisonous puffer fish, Bella has made an extraordinary recovery. Look at you. She's got her normal strength and she's bright and happy and running around, wagging her tail, and her mum and dad are going to be very excited to see her. Carolyn and Bella's big sister Coco have arrived to take her home. Look at her! Oh, yeah. oh kisses! <laughs> really, really lucky little dog because following the textbooks, she should have been dead not within here. an hour, not with us. So it's almost a miracle. It's yeah. fantastic. This is Boston. Yep. You say Boston? Is his name? This is Boston. On the Gold Coast, German Shepherd Boston has been rushed into the Animal Emergency Service after his owner found him on the floor, unable to walk. Hey, big man. Vets Dr Alex Hines and Dr Gerardo Poli need to urgently find out what's wrong with this distressed shepherd. Oh, you're a the owners man. came home, or they were away last night, and they came back this morning and uh, found out he couldn't really walk properly. Oh, he's breathing. Sounds a bit noisy too. Yeah. So just not walking properly? Anything else? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I think they think it's a tick. OK. Paralysis ticks are so deadly because they inject a poison that causes widespread paralysis, not only of the back legs, but also of the breathing muscles, and that's life-threatening. I don't know how we would ever find a tick with all this hair. Should be a prize for the person who wins, eh? Who finds the tick? Yeah. Gosh, it's hard to even get your fingers down right down to his skin. Boston is showing all the signs of a patient severely affected by tick paralysis. Every breath is laboured, he can't stand, he's in real trouble. If left untreated, tick paralysis can cause death in dogs in as little as 24 hours. It's okay. Oh, it's OK. I know, so many hands over you, mate, so many hands. This is back, lots of pats. I think I can feel something. Oh, if you found that that quick, you must have magic hands. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty big tick there as well. Ouch. Oh, it's still moving, its legs are moving. Yeah. All right, told him so. Let me see if I can pull it out. This might hurt a little bit because his skin looks really sore around here. Oh god, this thing doesn't want to let go. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, mate. Good go. boy. Wow, it's amazing how something that small can have such a deadly impact. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, isn't it? He's such a big dog. But that would be enough to cause the kind of paralysis that he's showing. I think he'd benefit from some, some sedation, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's just even to help that that upper airway breathing. Now that we've found the tick, it's vital that we get Boston onto some oxygen because I can see that he's already suffering from breathing paralysis. And then we can start the tick anti-serum. We're still going to have to clip all his hair off because we don't know that there's not another one there. But in the short term, he really needs the tick anti-serum because the toxin is circulating around his system at the moment. And the quicker we get the anti-serum on board, that will allow it to start neutralising the toxin. Come on through. Before starting treatment, Alex is bringing through owners Rebecca, Wade and Little Harlow to say goodbye to Boston. You couldn't go and not say goodbye, I think, and especially for my little one. Got to give him love and stuff like that and make sure he's OK before we leave. There he is. It wouldn't be home without Boston. He makes our family whole. He's the best dog. He's just so good with our little one. She climbs all over him and he's just so patient with her and loves her. I feel like with dogs, when you look into the eyes, you can kind of see what's going on and he looks very sad, struggling. You look 
sad. He's a bit sad. Yeah. We cut on kissy. Say goodbye. Okay, guys. You say see you soon, Boston. I really want to clip Boston's hair to be sure there are no other ticks. But he's too unstable. We're going to have to leave him for tonight, and tomorrow morning, hopefully, he'll be well enough that we can do the clip. Four-year-old tick paralysis patient Boston has taken a turn for the worse. We've given Boston sedation, and that's helped, but his oxygen levels are dropping. I want to get the tick anti-serum on board, but at this stage, I have to get him stable. His oxygen levels are dangerously low. Come on, Mr Boston. Hey. I'm becoming concerned that we're going to have to intubate him, take control of his airway and put him on life support. It's, it's really gurgly. I just wonder if, if we even got to suction him, even in his mouth. Hear that? Mm. He's real gurgly. We try an oxygen mask, but Boston's fighting it. It feels claustrophobic. I know we're going to need to put a nasal line in if we're going to help him with his oxygen levels. This is definitely better than him just having a mask in front of his face he doesn't tolerate. And it's much better than him breathing room air, so he needs this. Boston's oxygen levels improve and we don't have to intubate. We're going to wait to clip the rest of Boston's coat. We know there was one tick, there could be more, but at the moment the priority is to get the tick anti-serum on board. Yep. OK, that's running. Once that's into his bloodstream, neutralising the toxin, I'm hoping we'll get him to turn the corner. You can hear that noise that he's making. Each breath is taking extra effort, and that's a real worry. If his breathing slows down, then that's where we start to need to intervene, and we may even need to take over the work of breathing for him. Oh, mate. There's not a lot more I can do for Boston right now, but I am really worried. I'm going to be checking up through the night, and I can't help thinking about that family at home who are just hoping he's going to pull through this. It's touch and go. Boston's pretty serious at the moment. So what's happened is the toxin has still had an effect, and the antiserum mops up the toxin in the bloodstream, but there's still toxin bound to his nerves, and that's his own immune system will have to get rid of that over time. So generally what happens is a little bit of a deterioration over the next sort of six or 12 hours, and he's kind of deteriorated quite rapidly. Boston has been transferred to the intensive care unit as his condition is now critical. The nursing care is a bit more intensive, so hopefully that's enough to keep him stable, keep him comfortable, so we don't have to progress his care into mechanical life support. Boston's condition has continued to deteriorate. You're really paralysed now. What happened? It all just went downhill. Your family is going to be so worried about you. We knew that this could happen, Boston, hey, but I was really hoping it wouldn't. But you definitely are worse than yesterday. Alex fears the poison from a deadly paralysis tick may have done too much damage before the antivenom could take effect. He's now got two oxygen lines in. He's definitely still putting a lot of effort into breathing. We're worried about what we can hear on his chest sounds and we think he might have aspirated, so we think he's developed pneumonia. So we're going to want to take some chest X-rays and then we'll know how bad this is. Good boy. In we go, Boston. Good boy. It's OK. OK, big fella. All right, we're ready. All right. Boston's X-ray, it doesn't look very good at all. What I'm seeing is almost complete consolidation of the lung. This is pneumonia on a massive scale. This has added a whole level of complexity to Boston's condition. It means that not only is he dealing with the tick paralysis, but he's got a severe pneumonia. That, and this could be the part that's life-threatening now. Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. You're going to lose all of that beautiful hair. Charles, buddy. Mm -hmm. With paralysis tick patient Boston's health deteriorating, the decision is made for vet Elise and vet nurse Natalie 
to go ahead with clipping his fur in search of further ticks. Poor Boston, he's now got paralysis and pneumonia. We've started antibiotics for the pneumonia, but the next step is to clip this hair off. We've got to make sure there's no more ticks. I'm amazed that they found the first tick under all this hair. Boston is now at the stage where he's completely paralysed in his body. He can lift his head, look around a little bit, but that's about all he can do. What that means is we have to help him with all these bodily functions. He can't even go to the toilet on his own. So we're going to need to put a urinary catheter in. We have to put cream in his eyes because his blinking is affected. All these things become paralysed as part of the condition. I'm worried there could be another tick there. 10% of patients have a second tick. And if he has a second tick somewhere hiding in this big furry coat, then it will kill him. Boston's owners, Beck and Wade, have come for a visit, desperate to see their sick boy but a decision has been made to keep them at a distance. It's extremely hard um, for owners not to be able to come in and visit when they have tick paralysis, but um, we have seen um, animals before, like Boston, that are just coping okay on their own, that when they see their owners, they get so excited and their bodies just can't cope with that extra bit of stress. So, yeah, you know, you always think they're gonna be so much better coming in and seeing you, um, but actually in this case, it can be really dangerous for them. He's getting all his hair off all thing. Yeah. He looks so sad. Yeah. So we were obviously just hoping to go see him and just give him a cuddle, make sure that he was doing OK, and to reassure that we're still here and, you know, hoping for the best for him sort of thing. And I don't know, didn't know really what to expect. We got a, um, lots of phone calls last night, which was really good. Just kept us, you know, in the lurk and know what was going on. So, um, yeah, we just wanted to see an improvement. So what sort of journey do you think he's going to be on? The pneumonia, to be honest, has set him back a little bit. OK. Yeah, because it's just given him another thing to fight. Okay. So it really is a matter of just watch and wait a little bit. There's only so much we can do for him, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and a lot of it's, it's going to be up to Boston to fight this. I feel very nervous, constantly just anxious because we just don't know what's going to happen, because um, obviously he's got pneumonia as well. So he's got an extra thing he needs to fight and get through. So um, Boston's not out of the woods. It's sort of touch and go. The clip is over. It was a marathon effort, but well worth it. And we're done. Good boy. Good boy. No more hair for you. And we didn't find a second tick? No, we no. didn't find any additional ticks. OK. I feel much better now the hair's off. We know for sure it's just that one tick that was causing the problem. So I think at this stage, we've really done everything we can for him. He's had his clip. He's had his tick anti serum. It's really up to Boston now to fight this and get better and get home. Yeah. Hey, Boston. How are you doing this morning? You're still on your oxygen by the look of it. Tick paralysis patient Boston is still in intensive care and Alex can't relax just yet. It's been two days since Boston came into intensive care. It's good to see that the paralysis is wearing off, but the pneumonia, it still has him in the danger zone. That breathing sound still sounds a bit rough, hey, mate? Hey? You just look tired. How are you going with your walking? I just wonder if we might give you a little bit of a trial around and see if you can get up and about. He's blinking and he wasn't able to blink when he first came through into the ICU. So those things, as they improve, they tell us that it's less the paralysis that's holding him back at the moment and more the pneumonia. You gonna show me what you can do? You can come for a little walk? Come on. Good boy. That was really good. Hey? Take it slow. Oh, you're off. That's great. Good job, Boston. Yeah, there's not much of you under there. Now you've got no fur. Oh, oh, no, no, don't go check out the other patients. If you're walking that well, you might even be up for some food pretty soon. Good boy. It may not seem like a good thing to see a dog wee inside, but this is really good for Boston. It's an important step in the recovery of tick paralysis because it really shows us that the paralysis is starting to wear off and he's able to resume those normal bodily functions on his own. So good on Boston for having a wee. Is that your bit of exercise for today? Do you want to hop back into bed? I think you'd be better off in bed. Good boy. Can you sit down? Oh, yeah. I know. 
will get you connected to your oxygen again. I can't even think about Boston going home until he's off the oxygen and breathing on his own. Right now, he's a long way from that. You're feeling much better now, aren't you, Boston? Hey, you're such a good boy. Hey, you want to go home today? That'll be pretty exciting. You're going to see your family again. Good boy, yeah. It's been five days since German Shepherd Boston was bitten by a deadly paralysis tick and left fighting for life. After a week in intensive care, he's finally on the mend. Hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, really well. Um, he is doing fantastic. So what's the verdict? Is he, do you think he's good enough to go home? Yeah, I think he's ready to come home. He is off oxygen, um, he's had some dinner and he's up and walking around. That's so good. Hey, Boston. Hey. Are you a good boy? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, buddy. I am so thrilled that Boston is going home today. There were moments where I wasn't sure if he was going to survive and just being able to take him out to his family, this is going to be incredible. Hi. Hello. Hi. Does he look a Hi. bit different? Yeah, he looks a lot different. He's so different. Buddy. Oh, boy. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hey, yeah, buddy. what do you think, Carlo? Did you still know it was Boston? Do you know it's Boston? Yeah. Hello, boy. Oh, that's honestly, that's the happiest scene that he's He looked a bit unsure. He was like, oh, no. <laughs> hey, boy. There's a boy. Hey. He looks so different. What did they do? Why he's still our baby. Yeah. yeah. It can be really tough as an emergency vet. It's long hours, it's tough work, there's big decisions to be made. But seeing patients like Boston go home today, it's so worthwhile. This is why we do it. Eddie, you be a good boy. Are you going to take him out? Yeah, he's not going to oh, be a... not that way. Just hey, go, Boston. Come on. Let's go, boy. Yeah. Yeah, hold on tight. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.